Okay, so now that we've looked at the model loader file, let's start looking at the types of models that can be loaded into this file. In the last lesson, I talked about how models.txt was responsible for declaring the models or objects to be recognized by the engine. Before we go into the OpenBOR stats tool, let's open up Sublime Text and look at one of these model files that get loaded in models.txt. All right, if you haven't opened this already, let's go ahead and open models.txt again. At line 12, there's a loading for a model called Kula. And a path to that file is data, characters, Kula, Kula.txt. So now let's use the sidebar to navigate to that file. Now that we have it open, let's quickly look at lines four through seven for now. We have the following commands, name, health, speed, and type. We'll only go over these commands for now. We'll go deeper in the intermediate course. Name is just the name of the model. One thing to note is that the name given in this file should always match the name loaded in the models.txt file. You'll notice how both this file and line 12 of models.txt are both called Kula. Health is the initial HP or health points of this object. Damage taken will decrease this number until it gets to zero and it's destroyed. Speed is basically how fast the object will move. Type is the type of object this model is. We see here that the type of this model is player. So that means this will be selectable as a character to play with. Now that we see the relationship, let's now open up OpenBOR stats and it's located in user folder dbh game class dbh course open bor dash tools now we open up this folder let's open up open bor stats.exe once open let's look at the interface this is your visual editor to the engine for now we are only going to focus on parts of the interface that we'll use in this course so here are the main areas of the tool we have the toolbar at the top then below, we have the project area. So let's look at the toolbar. We'll start with this yellow orangish button and then go to the right. This button is a shortcut to launching the engine instead of the have to use the file explorer. Next is a green circle, which stands for reloading the project area with the most up-to-date information. Next, you'll see a drop-down field, which we'll explain in a second. After that is a blue folder. This folder is what you would use to open up your game engine project, which is located in the data folder of the game engine you're working in. This is definitely an important button, so keep that in mind. Remember that drop down on the left though? This is a shortcut list of all the projects loaded in the past. So you can load past projects by selecting it from that drop down as well. The very last button will be saved for the intermediate lesson. Now let's open up our engine project by clicking on the blue folder button. You'll now see a window to where you navigate to your data folder in your game engine. You remember where it is, right? User folder, DBH game class, DBH course, main open BOR, build, and then data. All right, so once this folder is selected, click OK to open. In the projects area, you'll notice a tree of sections. For now, we're only going to focus on the model section. So we'll open this up by clicking the plus sign to the left of models. Listed in here are your model types. As you can see, there are several types here, one being the player type. So let's focus on this one for now and look at the different models of this type by clicking on the plus sign to open it up. Player types are the characters you play with in the game. They are specifically for that purpose. You should notice Kula inside of this list. Let's actually open this up by double clicking Kula. We'll go into this model editor screen in the intermediate course, but just notice those same commands that were listed in the Kula.txt file show up here as well. 
We'll keep it at here for now until the intermediate course, but you should have a better understanding of how models work though through this tool. We hope you're learning what you can from these free tutorials. Again, if you feel you need more in-depth or extensive services or extra help with learning and getting the most out of this and don't want to wait on the videos, please feel free to join our DBH community for only $5. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions on here though. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post those. Like and share this playlist for those who may need it. At the end of the day, we just want to help people build their engineering and coding skills to be efficient wherever they want to go. I'm Kevin. Appreciate you watching and be brilliant. Peace.